Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to this series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. In this one, I'm going to be going through Dragon Slayer, a classic fantasy role-playing game by Greg Gillespie. This is Greg's new RPG that he's developed over the past, uh, well, m many months at this point. But it's, but it's been in development, it sounds like, at his table all the way since he's first started playing. It's just sort of his homebrew version of BNX D&D &D, uh, that he's used at his table for years. But finally, it's been put together and presented here. It is really, really cool, I have to say. So first of all, the, the art throughout this entire book is gorgeous. Now, I, I kickstarted it, and I think one of the very first people to get the initial uh, PDFs from the final product. Uh, there's sort of a test run to send it out to some people, and then there's the final one going out, I think, maybe tomorrow or maybe just uh, later today. But uh, So I'm really glad that I got this. I'm really happy to be a part of this um, Kickstarter because this is just such a great book. It's, such, it's a beautiful book, and it's going to go uh, right on my shelf. Now, this is obviously the PDF version, but I have the print one coming, and so when that arrives, it'll be a beautiful uh, beautiful product to put on my shelf right next to my my copies of, you know, um, Barrow, Barrow Maze and High Fell and the other adventures by Greg. Now, as you'll see, this is pretty much a version of BNX d and it, it has a lot of overlap with like old school essentials. In a lot of ways, it pretty much just feels like old school essentials in a different form with slightly different variants on rules and uh, a slightly different, well, certainly a slightly different presentation. But if you're interested in a brand new system that's never been seen before, that tries something new, that's experimental, this isn't going to be the system for you. This is straight up, basically, a home-brewed, modified version of BNX d and That's what this is. And that's great. That's super cool, and this particular presentation of it is awesome. So I like it, but it's also got the, the various limitations and excellences that that game has, and it's certainly old school. Now, my game of choice these days is Shadow Dark, and I'm really happy with it. I'm going to be sticking with it. I don't think I'm going to be shifting over to Dragon Slayer. But if I were to play a version of BNX D&D, and I really had my choice between, say, Old School Essentials and this one, I think I might go with Dragon Slayer. Old School Essentials is great, don't get me wrong, but there's something about this particular presentation, this particular set of the rules, with the, the very slight modifications here and there, and, and there are some that are bigger, some that are smaller, but... Um, but this particular combination of them I actually really like. And I think I might use this. But if you're, you know, again, is it different enough from old school essentials that if you're like really tight for money and you're, you know, you're just, you're, you're, you're trying to get a new book because you think you're going to be playing it and it's a great departure from, it's not that different than old school essentials or other BNX games. So you keep that in mind. It's, it's not going to be, you know, mind-blowingly new what you're seeing in this book. But if you're familiar with Greg's work in Barrow Maze and in High Fell and in the Forbidden Valley of the Forbidden Valley of Archaea, Lost Valley of Archaea, I actually forget the name of that adventure, um, and Duero Deep, if you're familiar with those uh, adventures, then you're going to know what you're getting in this book. So I'm going to go through it. It's a very large PDF. It's nearly 300 pages. Now, a, a large portion of that is monsters and spells which I'm always a fan of more monsters and more spells. I love I love monsters and spells, and so and the presentation here is great. There's basically a picture for every single monster, as you'll see. The art throughout is awesome. Uh, Greg got a whole bunch of old school, you know, um, artists from back in the day to to present the, to, to make the art for this book. And so it feels just like a, I don't know, it's like a, it's like a love letter to, you know, old school D&D. Now, one of the things you're going to get throughout this entire book is there's a fair bit, I wouldn't say of snark, it's not the way I would put it, but, you know, like, this is a grognard's dream come true, and I mean that affectionately, you know, the grognard in a positive sense. Like, this is all, like, we're going to play it our way, right? And I think Greg has sort of a reputation for that online. I don't actually know a lot about that. I haven't gone into all of the details, but just on comments on other videos that I've, I've made, people have seemed to indicate that, and I get that tone from this book. Role-playing isn't storytelling. If the Dungeon Master is directing it, it's not a game. Gary Gygax evidently said that. And that makes sense to me, but that gives you a sense of the kind of tone you're getting in this book. I think that there are going to be people who don't like that tone in this book. I don't think Greg cares. I don't think he's designing for them. <laughs> so, you know, keep that in mind when you're getting into this. Um, the table of contents, it's excellent. You get a very clear presentation. It's hyperlinked, which, thank you. I love hyperlinked tables of contents. Always do. 
you get a character sheet right on the first page, and you can see very straightforward D&D uh, character sheet. Name, race, class, level and title, alignment, deity, etc. All the basic stuff, armor class, hit points, weapons, and then you have your six basic ability uh, abilities with the modifiers that typically go along with them. And then the saving throws are breath, death, stone, wand, and spell. Paralysis basically is stone, right? And then you have your to hit armor class zero, or to hit armor class ten to zero. You can put that down there with the second page for extra stuff here. About Dragon Slayer, a good introduction with some tenants that you should use in this game. Ask exact, ask exact questions, rulings over rules, the League of, ex, of Ordinary Gentlemen, ex, excuse me, right? These are ordinary people. The game balance, if you want to be prepared, read Sun Tzu's Art of War. That's what his piece of advice is there. Who's in control? And the idea is, well, it's the players, but they can give control over to the maze controller or the, the game master. MC is what it's called in this, the maze controller, but the, the DM. But they don't want to do that, if at all possible, right? You want to keep the maze controller from rolling. Don't let him attack you. So, you know, there's actually a lot of good advice for the players in this book about how to approach old school gaming. I would probably take a few of the pages from this book if I were trying to introduce players to old school games, like really hard, hardcore old school games. I'd probably give them some of the pages from this book. Great page of terminology, basic rules for generation, along with what the ability scores are. Now, if you're familiar with old school essentials, you're going to know what this stuff is. You're going to know all of the basic stuff for this book. If you're familiar with old school D&D, this book doesn't depart from it in any significant way. There are slight changes here and there, but for the most part, it's just straight up D&D. Now, races is something that I think are, they are different here. Certainly, they're different than old school essentials, and the, the race class is not assumed. Rather, race as class is not assumed. You can be a race and then have a class on top of it. That's the assumption. You get elves, halflings, half-orcs, dwarves, humans... Cyclo Cyclops men, gnomes, and half-elves. Uh, Cyclops men is a really interesting new race that's been added in, and I like them a lot. Every race gets, well, not every race, humans don't have them, but mo almost every other race has an ability score requirement to pick them. Uh, ability score modifier, so once you pick them, then certain uh, abilities uh, are modified. And then class and level limitations, so there are certain classes that they can pick, and then they can only reach a certain level in that class. Humans are the only unlimited one. What that means is that every other race gets something special, but they're never going to level up as high as other as, as humans can. That's the balance that he that Greg draws in this book. The Cyclops Man is an absolutely awesome race. It can only be fighters or paladins, uh, and it can only get to level ten as a fighter, level eight as a paladin. Dwarves can be assassins, clerics, fighters, and thieves, um, and then they have a special bonuses: elves, assassins, cleric, fighters, magic users, the thieves, uh, gnomes, halflings, half orcs. And then you get the classes. Clerics, with the race and level limits for each class as well. And I have to say, the layout of these classes is so clear. So, so simple. I like it quite a lot. So one of the things that Greg says in this book is simple, but not simplistic. Or perhaps, no, no. What he says is simplified, but not simple. That's this game. It's simplified, but not simple from BNX D&D. &D. And I think that seems absolutely true from what I can tell. Simplified, not simple. So you're not, you know, you're still looking at a few charts and tables. You're still looking at these things like late race and level requirements. You're still looking at, you know, to hit armor class zeros. Um, you're still dealing with that. But it's been, pres it's been presented in a really, really clear way. And I think in a, in a superior way, honestly, to a lot of other presentations of old school rules. Certainly better than the original. Certainly better than the original. I really like the druid. You know, the, the art in this book is just awesome throughout. I love the art in this book. The monks, fighters, barbarians, paladins, rangers, magic users, illusionists, thieves, assassins. And then you get alignment here with starting gold pieces, coinage and conversions, all the stuff that you might need in a good standard D&D book for equipment list. But it is the standard D&D equipment list, right? I mean, again, that's you get the sense of what this book is going to be. It's going to be... A new presentation, a very beautiful presentation, a very refined presentation of the, the general idea of D&D that we've all come to know, uh, but in that old school way. Ye old generic fast pack. I love that. Very helpful. Pack A, B, or C. Get a quick one and go forward. Stuff like that. Little quality of life additions to the old school format. That's great. Super helpful transportation descriptions, and then you get lists of spells. Here are your cleric spells. 
up through level 7. Druid spells up through level 7. Magic user spells, just a whole bunch more, up through level 9. And then Illusionist spells up through level 7. On the spells, you get spell constraints, initiative, and how they have to, how that works. So player characters must announce their desire to cast a spell preceding initiative dice at the start of each combat round. That's something we see in Old School Essentials. It's something we see elsewhere in Old School games. Some spells require saving throws. Some spells are reversible, so you can cast the one form or the other. Spells have cumulative effects sometimes. You get starting spells and how that works. And then you get spell descriptions. And it's just alphabetical. You go through, there's a whole bunch of spells in here. And a lot of spells that I think Greg has developed over the course of his four now mega dungeons that he's developed. In each of those, there were lots of spells in the back. And I think he's drawn on a lot of those to develop these spells because there are a lot, a lot, a lot of spells in this book. I mean, some people are going to just get, <laughs> go crazy for the number of spells in this book. Pages and pages and pages and pages and pages of spells. I love that piece of art. Oh my goodness, I love that piece of art. The wizard hanging out on an old <laughs> D6, half overgrown. So cool. But I mean, look at these spells. Let's look at one. Quest, reversible, level 5, cleric, duration, see below, range 20 feet. Through this spell, a priest can compel a player character to undertake a quest. The PC is allowed a saving throw spell to negate. This quest may involve danger, but the priest cannot instruct the PC to harm him or herself. If the target of the spell resists the quest, she, he, will be affected by a curse, chosen by the maze controller. The PC must complete the quest to terminate the spell. Alternately, alternatively, a priest may cast the spell in reverse, remove quest, to dispel an active quest. Similar to dispel magic, the cleric's ability to remove quest is tied to original caster's level. For each level below the original caster, there is a cumulative 5% chance of failure. Great. Or raise dead, which is also reversible. This spell imbues life into a deceased body of a human or demi-human. So it's specific, to human or demi-human only. Returning from the dead is an extraordinary trial. And then at the very bottom, the reverse of the spell, Eternal Demise, prevents a deceased human from being raised short of a wish. Now that's interesting, right? So you can cast the raised dead spell in reverse. I could see an entire quest being built around the Eternal Demise spell. That's a great idea. Some great art here. Uh, reincarnate classic spell in D&D. Again, just a oh, great piece of art. And they, you, that's what I love about this book, too. Is you'll be scrolling through, reading through. And you're like, mm, that's pretty cool, that's pretty cool. And then you'll hit a piece of art. You're like, whoa, that it just takes me right in. Spider Climb, a great piece of art for Spider Climb there. Stone-shaped spore cloud, stone beard. You get the idea. Spells and spells and spells. This is a piece by Darlene. Uh, done in 2023. Plenty of awesome spells throughout. Then you get monsters, and this is the other huge portion of this book, is monsters. You get a piece of art pretty much for every monster. Now, I say pretty much because when there are like groups of monsters, like lots of giant vermin, for example, different kinds, you won't, might not get a picture for every one of them. Like, you don't get a picture for each kind of statue. But you get a picture for a kind of statue, and then you get an Ankeg and an Axe Beak. Baboons, basilisks, black puddings, blink dogs. Now again, I think Greg has also released a monster manual for all of his um, Mega Dungeons. Now I don't know if they're actually uh, the same as all, all they're in here, because I don't have that book. So I couldn't say if it's completely identical to that monster manual. I would imagine it's not. I would imagine that those are um, particular to his Mega Dungeons and that this is more generic, but um, but it might not be. You have Dragons of Evil and Dragons of Good with particular, uh, you know, stat blocks for each of these. And the, and the pieces of art for each of the dragons is awesome. It gives you a sense of what it is. The Dragons of the Cosmos. You have the Father of Dragons, the Mother of Dragons, and Dragon Turtles, Dragons or Dragons, I don't know how to say that. Drow, Dryads, Dwerger, Ear Seekers, that's so gross. The Freedy Electric Eels. Monsters and monsters and monsters and monsters. Tons and tons of them. I mean, again, if you got this book just for its spell book and for the monster manual, you would have a great source of solid uh, stat blocks to add into old school games with good descriptions of most of them. And some of them are a lot longer than others, but you get, you know, descriptions of all of the monsters there. That you're going to find in all the monsters that you would need. Oh, there's another one of the great ones. See the eyes at the bottom of the staircase? This is just excellent. Absolutely excellent. No, I think this book is 
you know, I don't have, I mean, I have old school essentials and it's broken up. I have the two box sets of the different small books and that's great to have. And I like being able to grab the little monster manuals and bring them out and, and use them at the table. And I, I often use them just as like inspiration or quick little things as I'm running other games. Um, having this as well would be a great, uh, not, I, would sh I shouldn't say duplicator because they're not, they're not all, all the same or identical. And I'm sure that there are going to be stat block differences. That would be interesting to actually go through and look at old school essential stat blocks versus the monsters in here and see how they compare. But there are uh, a lot of extra that you would find in the one and in the other, and you could then build up and, and use them both together. But they are very similar, right? I mean, you can definitely tell that. <laughs> They're very similar. This, along with other you know, old school games, uh, you're going you're gonna to run into out there. Very similar in their, the kinds of monsters you're running into. Treasure types. Tons and tons of treasure. Tons and tons of treasure. With potions, scrolls, rings, rune stones. Major rune stones, minor rune stones, ward stones, a great element of this book. Rods, stav staves, and wands, or staves, and staves. And then particular magic items, like relics, basically, you know, particular ones that you can find. Great list of magic items, tons of magic items, in fact. Awesome piece of old school art there. Magic swords, magic weapons, magic armor, it rules for intelligence swords, and then combat. If you're familiar with old school games, you're going to be familiar with this. There's a critical miss table, which is great. And then abbreviated combat and miniature light rules, which is sort of a new addition to the game, right? I shouldn't say new addition, but this particular, this is clearly a homebrew thing. Like his, you know, they, this is how he plays it at his table. They use miniatures, they use five foot squares, they have all the things drawn out. Here's how to do that. So good advice there as well. But the combat example, how saving throws work and the different tables for them. Great piece of treasure there. A great piece of art there, with treasure in it, I should say. Dungeon exploration rules. Uh, now, I would say, I think the, 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 the presentation of the dungeon exploration turns and things like that are better presented in Old School Essentials. I just like those methods a little better than what we get here, which isn't all that much, but it's a, a sufficient to talk about how to do it. And then you get uh, advice for designing adventures and how to, uh, how to proceed with a dungeon generator, which is really cool. You have a, a brief dungeon generator in the back. Room, and room contents, or random tables for monsters and treasure, blank sheet, and then a sample dungeon, which is great. You always want to have some sort of sample here. Good sample dungeon at the back. And some wandering monster tables, wilderness survival rules, uh, which is awesome. And I think, um, yeah, in order to, you, you have the rules for creating this thing, this would work perfectly well with like, you know, outdoor survival. <laughs> now I was gonna say, I don't see, I, I didn't see him mention that particular book game. I know that his mega dungeons are designed to fit onto that outdoor survival map, but there's no reference to that here, unfortunately. But that's cool. I mean, that's fine. How experience points work, and then appendices. An FAQ. This is really interesting. Mostly, this is to the players, I suppose. Um, should I write an in-depth backstory for my character? Heck no. There isn't much point in writing a paragraph backstory when the fir most first when most first level characters can be killed with the swing of a sword. Instead, write a single sentence. What's up with the racial level limits? My PC has low ability scores and really sucks. What should I do? Right? What what class should I play? Like, this is just, you know, give this to your players and say, hey, here's how this game works. Right? <laughs> this is how this game works. Uh, 286 at the bottom of the page. My cleric needs 3,000 experience points to get to the next level. Seems glacial. Will it ever happen? Probably not, is his answer. <laughs> your special snowflake cleric will probably die a terrifying death as a delicious snack in the maw of a ravenous monster long before then. Your job is to have fun and help the party survive. If you manage to make it to level four, and let's face it, the odds aren't good, you win. You should be feeded by your friends and lauded by your family. Have your girlfriend or boyfriend treat you to dinner. You also have to bring snacks to the next game session for everyone. It's, you know, again, like I said, it's, it has not snark exactly, but there's sort of a, yeah, it's a very particular attitude towards gaming here. And it's like, hey, this is how you're playing this game. If you get this book and you intend to play it, you kind of have to agree with that. Great. Good. It's, it's you know, it's very non unapologetic in the kind of game it's coming from. I like that. A Magic User 101, how to play a Magic User well, just advice to your players. Because again, if you've never played that before, you're not going to have an idea of how to do it. And then Sage Advice, little bits of advice to give your players quickly. Carousing rules at the back if you want to add in some carousing. And then a Dragon Slayer Time Wheel, which is really cool. I think he used this in uh, Forbidden Caverns of Archaea, something like this to keep track of when torches burn out, when you're supposed to, you know, when patrols happen and things like that. So you could you could 
make this yourself and, and do that here. Random coffin or sarcophagus contents at the very back. Random dungeon dressings, random scrolls and book titles, and then an official death certificate. The Shall ye enter? Great piece of art right there. And then the uh, legal stuff at the back. So this is Dragon Slayer by Greg Gillespie. Now, again, am I going to use this book? Probably not. I, I, I am very happy with Shadow Dark right now. I think this is a really interesting... I should say this. I think it's a really beautiful presentation of the standard, refined, home-brewed slightly, or maybe extensively. You know, I, I have to admit, I don't have a ton of experience with BNX d and I haven't played it that much. I've played it maybe like twice, <laughs> all said and done sessions. I've played a little bit more old school essentials than I have the original or anything like that. So I can't say that I'm just like, oh yeah, I know it backwards and front. So as a comparison, I don't know how useful I could be there. But what I would say is this, as a layman, looking through BNX D&D, &D, uh, the, different, the different editions of old school D&D, &D, looking through old school essentials, looking through this book, as someone who is much more familiar with fifth edition, third edition, you know, Shadow Dark, that side of things, even Pathfinder. This looks very, very similar to stuff we already have out there in terms of its actual mechanics and in terms of the way it, it works. But the particular presentation of it, the particular rounding off of the edges of certain rules, the particular combinations of certain uh, smaller homebrew things here and there, and the, um, I would say, the simplicity of presentation. It's all right here. Two-page spread for most of your classes. That's really cool. That is going to appeal to a lot of people. And I think you can, and especially with the, with the art and the cover, the presentation, this is something that I think a lot of people are going to very much enjoy. I'm not sure it will be transformative. I don't think that was his intention, was to present a transformative new RPG to the, to the, to the hobby, right? It's not, it's, this is not um, Crown and Skull. Right where where Hanker and Fernell is, is is trying something brand new. That's not this. This is somebody saying, "Hey, this is the game that we've been playing for years. It works. It's a ton of fun. It's it's how I run these really cool mega dungeons. Have it. Awesome. That's super cool. And and have it with this beautiful art and beautiful presentation. I, you know, I have nothing but uh, but warm feelings for that. So I'm very happy that I have this. I'm definitely going to use it for inspiration. I'm definitely going to use the monster tables, the spells for sure. I'm going to try to bring them into Shadow Dark because I think some of them are really, really cool. The homebrew spells that he has in here. And there's a whole bunch of homebrew spells that he has in here. Those are really cool. And I want to, I want to steal them. Um, but as a system, I don't think I'm going to use it probably for the same reason that I don't use old school essentials. Um, I'm happier with uh, the, the newer form of D&D rule set that we see with 5th edition and, well, really with Shadow Dark. I think that's where I am right now. Maybe someday I'll come back to the more old school essentials and Dragon Slayer type games. And I think if I were to do that, I'd probably pick Dragon Slayer over old school essentials. So anyway, I hope this has been interesting, guys, and I'll see you in another video.